next curve. <laughs> hey, everybody. Are this we are, alive? We are live, apparently. I think we are. Yes, we are 15 seconds in. This is Leonard Lee, executive analyst. Yes, executive analyst of Next Curve. Here with my buddy, Rob Tiffany. And I don't know why, why our titles are not showing up here. And uh, we're having a lot of tef- technical difficulties. Difficulties. Yeah. And so We're we not may not actually survive this show. We may not. <laughs> we may not. So I'm not an executive. I'm just a principal. Well, it depends on which company I'm juggling at the time, right? You know, mm-hmm. I heard some people just promote themselves from within. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what happens when you're your own boss i mean you really have no other choice but uh, don't feel bad about that i remember many years ago maybe more than a decade or more ago when hp promoted all their directors and made them all vice presidents not because they needed to be a vice president but because the counterparts that they were negotiating with at other companies a uh-huh. more higher level and expected to be negotiating with a VP. And so they weren't getting enough street cred being just lowly directors. So yeah. it happens. It happens. Yes, it does. And then, you know, if you go to any bank, almost everybody is a vice president or a senior vice president. So, yeah. every That's right. Isn't that funny? Bank presidents, like every branch has a president. I'm yeah. the president. Yeah, I'm the president. All right. Yeah. We've got to find... We have got to find a version of this webcast that's actually really live. Yeah. I'm wondering, where do we find it? It says pre-live, but I don't know. Right. Is anybody and watching? Is anybody out there? Is, uh, I don't think so. But, hey, let's get started here. So what what is, what is this uh, webcast about, this uh, LinkedIn Live? Well, Rob and I have been on a number of um, sessions. Uh, where we've been talking about our CES 2023 takes. And so we've been doing these recaps and we figured, hey, why the hell shouldn't we just do one ourselves and actually get to our list? Because we have lists. We've got lists. Yes. We do have lists. I hope you brought your list. I did. I did. Yes. So CES 2023, it was pretty, a lot of people, 100,000 attendees, right? Yeah, that's right. at least that's what we are told. And yeah. when we were there, we saw a lot of people. I mean, it almost felt like we were back in. Yeah, lots of people it seemed like we were back in the groove again. Um, I think uh, some folks don't recall that the West Hall, where the automotive stuff was, is a brand new hall. It was it actually opened up during the pandemic. And it's shiny, uh, shiny and new. Yes. And one of the nice things was. Um, we, we didn't really uh, have to suffer ridiculous cab lines. It was actually sort of reasonable, right? Yeah, it was reasonable, semi-reasonable. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. That was a lot of fun. It was. A lot of, a lot of walking. Your, you know, CES is about getting your, your steps in in yes. a big way. Um, of course, you know, who knows? CES versus Fira Granvia, you know? It, it, you know, at least at least at Mobile World Congress, you're in one place getting your steps. You know, in Vegas, you're just like going all over the place. And uh, and then, of course, you know, there's the previously known as the Sands Expo area, whatever. It was the back of the Venetian, you know, uh-huh. and then they had shuttle buses that would take you from the Venetian over to the Las Vegas Convention Center. Yeah. Um, and then it's a mob. And so you had the did you have Central Hall, South, West, North? And then there's people outside set up kind of like in, it was almost like if we were at an auto racetrack and how people are in the infield, there were like Google and here maps and some other BMW and some like they were kind of set there and they had stuff and you're kind of outdoors. Uh-huh. That was kind of interesting. You know, you always see that. Um, but we've talked a lot about CES and it was important for us to get our, our extreme thoughts through because I know there's things in our list that we haven't always touched on. Because you know we're we're talking with other people. We're talking. We're all over the map. Yeah, because I mean, I, yeah, a lot of people are asking questions about the automotive stuff. Yes, obviously there was a lot of automotive, and I think that's where yeah. we get up on stuff. But hey, why don't you do this? Well, give me a couple of items on your list. What were some of your other key takes other than John Deere? All stuff? right. 
I'm going to give you a new one, a new one that you haven't heard and I actually have a business card that I'll just show. I'm not, I'm not trying to give props to anybody illegally, but this might blow people's mind. Age tech. This was AARP actually had a giant booth area deal, kind of a walkway, things on either side, really far. I think that was in the Venetian, actually, at the back of the Venetian. It was giant, and I was so intrigued because unlike everything else we're looking at, you know, here's this whole space put on by AARP. For all yeah. you folks out there who don't know what AARP is, when you turn 50, you may get a letter in the mail saying, hey, today's your lucky day. You get to join a bunch of old people. Yeah. And yay. so, uh, yay. But you know what? It's, it, it's a, but I was really intrigued. And so I, I walked through there. I sat in a, there was a, they did a talk inside there. They kind of had their own stage. And uh, this is very interesting because you know what? I have heard, a, you know, when I've done IoT startup stuff in the past, and I've had different uh, people, advisors, I've actually had some talk to me and they go, it would be great if you could use some of this tech for geriatric stuff uh, and for older folks. And I'm like, well, let's talk about that. And it was just like, and I, we may have talked about this on Coffee Talk, this whole notion of, are there things we can do in IoT to help people age in place where mm -hmm. they don't have to move to a, a home, assisted living right. and the, and so, and I've had friends, you know, in the early days of IoT uh, that have, have done that. And so it's like, do I, how can I censorize an apartment for older person or couple, right, to yeah. keep them safe so that, you know, because you, you want them to be able to stay home longer, uh, yeah. I think is one of the takeaways. Anyway, I, I just want to say props to ARP. Didn't see that coming. Didn't seem like some from the future space tech thing at all. But it turns out it's super important because as it turns out, one day, all of us will not be young. Even though Alphaville told us that we'd be forever young back in the 80s, it turns out maybe not. And so uh, anyway, they also had an accelerator and the whole startup thing. I think they had funding um, for, for age tech. This almost looks like it says ag tech, which is agriculture, but this yeah, is age yeah. tech. No. And so, yeah, they've got accelerators and funds and stuff like that for age tech. So uh, anybody who's interested in age tech, I'd say go take a look at it. You know, it's always good to open your mind to things you're not always thinking about. You know, we yeah. think we know it all. We've figured it all. We've done it all. Yeah. And then all of a sudden something hits you in the face. And it's like there's this whole world of a big block of people. And I know we've talked about, you know, how we talk about um, Japan, for instance. Right. Right. How there's certain countries that are aging, yeah. and what right. and what we mean is a disproportionate of the population is older than it used to be. Whoa, whoa, what was that, Leonard? <laughs> Did you just what, what, yeah. what? Marcelo Pelletti, Pelletti. I think that's how. You... Is this like drinking and driving? This is drinking and. You're opining. <laughs> oh, I like that. That sounds like some fancy wine. Is that from France? Yeah, uh, no, this is this Malbec is not from France. It's from Argentina. Oh, yeah. Argentina, famous for their Malbecs. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I had a friend at Microsoft from Argentina, and every time he'd come visit me in Redmond, he'd bring me a bottle of Malbec from Argentina because that's that's their thing. Yeah. And I just have to dispel a myth right now, folks. Every one of those bottles just sucked. And really? I had to pour them down the drain. Well, it turns out he was probably buying the bottle like at the airport. You know how you can go buy liquor and stuff at the airport and bring yeah. on the plane? Yeah. I think that's where he was getting it from. So, yeah. okay. so folks, to, to really class things up here a bunch, I've got some Kirkland brand Bordeaux, you know, yeah, uh, so that's like Costco wine. But you know who knew? To that, can you hear that sound? Let's yeah. pour, let's pour a glass here of this Bordeaux Superior. <laughs> and uh, this is a 2020, so it's kind of fresh. I wish it was fresher. And this is 60% yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon and 40% Merlot. Um, so 
Yeah. Well, there you have it. So, yeah. Um, and uh, when you, I mean, when it's a weekend. Your, it's an odd time. And we're all actually being forced to do this at a very odd time. Probably not the a, best choice on our part, but. Yeah, we couldn't help ourselves. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Mm, nice bouquet. Really good on the nose. Good. You know, I know this is or eight ball, eight dollar ball, right? Yeah. It was six ninety nine, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my takes. Okay, one of the things that we've talked about in previous bits is South Korean president, president, not president. It was um, large, uh, especially with. Uh, the folks that uh, <laughs> we have Yon saying, I think I'll join you with a glass of wine. <laughs> like, no, oh, you enough. mean somebody's watching? What? Oh, yeah. Some people are watching. And we have Ron Ford who says, why is this BS being forced to me via LinkedIn? Yes, that's a very good question. Thank you for that comment. Really appreciate it. So anyway. And you froze again. I'm going to freeze constantly. There's something wrong on my end. And uh, anyway, this is our it's first your one time. gig fiber up and down. That's like, yeah, is a problem. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And you're freezing on me now. <laughs> but exactly. uh, yeah, a ton of uh, South Korean companies. We, we went into that. But um, I think what's for me on the on the PC side, the personal computing side of things, what was really important was this whole cross device cross platform that was a thing that was happening in particular the showcase by lenovo of think to think which i thought was really really cool they're in a really unique position um, probably the only other company that's a position like them is uh, is maybe samsung you know and i just got back from the galaxy unpacked event but this whole idea of having continuity and bridging the these walled gardens between um, uh, you know Windows, the Windows world and the Android world is hugely important. In fact, it is probably more important than any 200 megapixel camera. It's this continuity of experience, seamless experiences, uh, interactivity, and, and then uh, integrated workflows. And especially for creatives, it's hugely important, right? And I, it's, it's, cool to see companies like Lenovo and uh, Samsung tackling this because, you know, the, a lot of the integrations that either Intel or Microsoft or Google have been trying to put out there have been pretty non-differentiated. But the ironic thing is now you're st seeing certain brands uh, really just going, hey, you know, this is enough. This is ridiculous. If we're going to compete against Apple. We need to solve this, one of the biggest of all problems, and they're doing it. And you know, here's an interesting thing. I heard from the Samsung folks th that last year they kind of released some of these features and they didn't think it was important. So they never oh, really? really talked it up. And I went, wow, are you serious? This is the only thing that matters. You know, you can you can talk about you know little features here and specs on your processor and camera and this and that that it's not going to move the ball, but this makes the biggest difference in your universe that actually has big problems, right? So that you're talking about the ability to share or to share, integrate. you know, the stuff like airdrop ish kind of stuff, yeah. um, you know, multi-control, you know, being able to sit there and control multiple screens uh, via multiple devices uh, and across platforms, uh, whether it's windows or Android or Chrome. Um, okay. That, I mean, think about it. And when you look at it, when you're using just Apple stuff, because all the stuff works seamlessly, you know? Right. And so, uh, and and yeah, I, I thought that was a, a real cool thing to see, a big problem yeah. being solved at CES. And then there's the other thing, Matter. Matter, Matter yeah. kind of made its debut at its first CES and, you know, uptake is is pretty fast. I mean, you know, like the the uh, consortium members like Apple and uh, you know Amazon or AWS, Alexa, whatever, uh, Google, all these big guys, they're they're all in the game. So uh, they were talking a lot about it. But uh, um, so matter matters for people who are. Hmm? Yeah. Well, you know, Bill, Pew, our friend, will say that it doesn't. But there's a little bit of truth to that, I think, because. 
it doesn't solve all the problems immediately, right? Um, there's going to still be a lot of um, interoperability issues regardless. Yeah, you know, cause back because you know what? It, it's great that you started off just talking about the whole walled garden thing, right? And that they're in, you know, th th clearly Apple's unashamed. Like we are all in with our walled garden. Everything's proprietary. It's all us. It's not open. And that's what works best for us. Yeah. Clearly, you know, <laughs> and, um, and so all these other ecosystems, Android, and, you know, that's the weird thing. Android's so fragmented, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, is Samsung building their own thing? Is it an all Android thing? There's Windows trying over and over again to build its own kind of ecosystem. Um, and then, and yeah, you mentioned Chrome. Um, Chromebooks is a big thing. And uh, it's all sharing like that workflow, app stores, whatever, you know, uh, it's interesting how that plays out. And, and you're right, I, I don't think people think enough of it. No doubt about it. Like for instance, I think it's really cool you went to the unpacked event i watched the i watched it online and uh and that's a good thing to talk about because yeah. i mean i certainly i went to the samsung booth at ces it was giant ginormous uh and it was really cool and they had the setups you know they didn't they didn't have the new galaxy devices on display yet but uh they were showing some of the share and you know what i mean i because i try to have lots of different devices you know um just to see, you know, it's hard to speak intelligently about lots of different things unless you own the devices. You know, if you're a total Apple fanboy, you're not going to have much credibility talking about the Microsoft or the Samsung world or the Lenovo world or all that kind of stuff. And so it's really important to to have those devices, to use them all yeah. often so that yeah. you're really immersed in it for sure. Yeah. Um, I, um, I remember, what I, so I remember like on a Galaxy device I had and they did have a share thing and i i might be wrong i thought initially it was just to share with other samsung galaxy devices yeah but but maybe now it can share to apple um no you can there is this concept of uh, uh they have a cloud-based universal clipboard and uh you know they developed it specifically because of the 200 megapixel images they're so big that um they found that in order to transfer those, uh, get files transferred to their devices, they had to have the, put this cloud in place, right? And yeah. in that cloud, what you can have is, uh, let's say, a non-Samsung, non-Android uh, integration, but it, it's a little bit kludgy. You know, they, there's a okay. Yeah. Yeah. Their frozen QR code. Yeah, it, it's brokered. It's not native, right? Okay. Um, All right. But that's better than nothing. I mean, you know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. But so, regardless, the thing is, is that what really differentiates uh, Lenovo and you know, this emerging Samsung play is that these brands are able to bridge together the experience in a unique way because they have mobile in the pc so if yeah. you're looking at other brands like hp and dell they don't have a smartphone so they have to go through and work with whatever intel is providing or whatever yeah. google or microsoft is providing and yeah. there's no differentiation there right and one of the things right. that i think i think is just really obnoxious is the problem into so many different accounts to get these features it, yeah. it's not harmonized right in, in terms right. of security or access uh and those are things that have to be worked out um uh but you know the, the thing is is that as much as people will knock on apple for having sort of the wall garden the real wall, wall garden issue is in the android is in the non-apple universe because for the OEMs, this is a big problem for all of them. And if they're going to go and try to compete with Apple products, right, they have to deal with this. And, you know, even if functionally they get there, on the back end, it's a problem. Because yeah. you have to log into a Samsung account. You have to log into a Google account. You have to log into a Microsoft account. And maybe something else. Who knows? But at least right. three. At least. Yeah.
that, um, you know, services that are brokered and delivered and managed differently and right. embedded into the OS, it, OSs in different ways. And that that's, that's intrinsically kludgy. And so, you know, as Apple users, of course, you're going to go, well, I only, I only need an Apple ID and that's it. And I get all this yeah. stuff. Right. And, um, right. So how do you knock that? Do you know? How do you want how, and the, the proposition that you break that up is tremendously, uh, I mean, a lot of Apple users are going to go, why would you do that? This is a yeah. great solution, you know? So and, and, do you remember the whole discussion, how Google was kind of throwing bombs over the fence at Apple saying, hey, remember the whole blue bubble versus green bubble in the SMS and messaging? Yeah. And... And so there was like, I don't know, maybe it was a month or two ago. I don't know, but Google was really putting on the pressure and putting some ads out there and stuff saying, Apple, you need to get on board with this RCS standard. Yeah. And and just they just ignored and ignored and ignored Google. And then finally, Tim Cook gave him a response. Someone asked a pointed question like in person. And he's like, well, you know what? Um, we're very responsive to our customers. and none of our Apple customers are asking for this. So yeah. we're not going to do it. <laughs> um, this whole, because you know, so much of the world and us and being tech and everybody's like open, everything's got to be open and it's got to be, and guess what? Most people don't care about that stuff. No, they, they don't. Just want this, they just want it to work. No, yeah. they don't. They want, it, they want it to work. They just want it to work. And then, you know, and again, it's one of the things that I have in my The irony is the, the the companies that are kicking and screaming, you know, Apple walled garden are actually having to deal with walled gardens, real walled gardens that are po problematic to the ecosystem. And they themselves have to move toward a walled garden approach to differentiate themselves within the market that they play. And, right. you know, it's like uh, Apple, unfortunately, is going to suck up a lot of oxygen in the room. It, it's yeah. just the way it is. You know, your job is not, you know, your first priority shouldn't be to supplant them. It's really, how do I compete and be able to get at some form of functional and experience parity, but in order to differentiate myself in the market that, um, that I, you truly, truly compete in, right? Yeah. Um, and, and continue to uh, do what it does, you know? Um, but I don't think that that is something that is talked about at all because I think the mentality is exactly what you're saying, Rob. Open, open, open. A lot of this sort of almost religious, um, uh, you know, uh, fervor that everything yeah. just be open and that anything is closed is bad. I think, you know, that's really what's caused a lot of, uh, the dysfunction in the quote unquote not so open ecosystems, right? Yeah. So, dude, yeah. talk about heavy nugget. If people don't think that this is like heavy duty stuff, wow, you know? Heavy That's duty stuff. So, actually, here's an example of someone participating in the Apple ecosystem. Not here to plug anybody, but most people think you, if you've got an iPad and you want the, the Apple Pencil, that's the only way to do it. And yet, look, here's a Logitech pencil. And they play in all kinds of spaces. Most people think of them as webcams and mouse and mice. Yeah. And yet they do a great job of saying, where can we play, integrate, complement what these different ecosystems are doing, you know? Um, instead of swimming upstream all the time or fighting the tide, you know, I don't know. Right. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it, it is a challenge for a lot of the OEMs. I mean, I, I empathize, I, I sympathize with them. I can't empathize with them, but I sympathize sure. with yeah. them. But hey, the other thing, um, one of the other things that I noticed, dude, the, the big semiconductor brands just were not there. I mean, in previous CS as you go, there's a huge Intel booth. There's a huge, I mean, NVIDIA booth. Uh, Jensen's yeah. out there doing his thing. Yeah. And 
yeah. amazing video awesomeness uh you know like visual awesomeness you know that's nvidia they they just like freaking hit you with all these visuals and you just go oh my gosh you know yeah, yeah. Is there, right type of stuff none of it um the arm had a tiny little presence they they used to be pretty big um yeah, Qualcomm was right. probably the only company that had a big presence but it was in the automotive section right it was which, in the automotive right there's I, I did a tour which of that. Which, you know, as you know, because you do probably more coverage of Qualcomm than just about anybody with all the Snapdragon and, and no yeah. doubt they're making huge inroads into yeah. let's make cars out of Snapdragon chipsets, yeah. right? Yeah. You, yeah. you know, why, why leave? That's a great space to be in. It's not, not just for smartphones yeah. and not just for PCs or tablets. Go after these cars. When people woke up and realized there's sometimes over a hundred, maybe hundreds of all kinds of little chips and things inside a car. Yeah. That's a great market to go after for sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you, you, but here's the thing. So the tagline I have for my takeaway and my report is automotive hits puberty at CES. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it. that? I love it. I love it. Pretty That's cool. Awesome. Huh? It's yeah. very cool. It's absolutely it's the right. best. Um, you know, we got to spend some time with our friends. You know, there was kind of a little bit of, of a section in the, was it the West Hall or the North Hall? I don't know. It was the North Hall where know. our some of our IoT-ish friends <laughs> were that play in that ecosystem. So yeah. Ignean, our antenna friends, you know, which yeah. we will see them in yeah. a few weeks, yeah. right? Uh, and so they make antennas. A lot of people... Don't think about antennas when they think about IoT devices. Maybe you should. Um, yeah. Blues Wireless, you and I spent a bunch of time with, with our yeah. buddies at Blues. I thought that was great. I think yeah. talk about coming after approaching that space from a different direction. I feel like I feel like I think of Blues, I think of it as like a mashup of ideas. Yeah. And what I, I, what I, I mean by talk ideas. Yeah. Yeah, what we've been talking about for three years. Actually, you and I for longer than that. For longer than that, yeah. For those of you who are out there who are tuning in, who don't know Next Curve or or a Digital Insights or IoT Coffee Talk. See, Rob and I in 2017, we were romping around at IoT uh, Solutions World Congress, and we were looking at what the hyperscalers were doing, and we were shaking our heads, saying no. Just say no. Yeah, right. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. And we were right. Yeah. Sorry. And, we were, yeah. were actually written. We, we in posts and everything. And of course, that. who who else is jumping on that bandwagon now? Our buddy Eric Simone from Clearblade. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? He's going to be okay. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You know, you know why? Why? It's because he watches IoT Coffee Talk. He uh, mines for the nuggets. Mining for the nuggets. That's what it's all about is mining for the nuggets. And, and you have to mine when you're on a coffee talk because who knows what we're going to talk about. You have no idea. And they might be like, Ooh. oh, there's the nugget. There we go. Yeah. So Blues Wireless, I feel like, is a mashup of once our friends from Deutsche Telekom. Is that a spinoff from them or whatever? It's, uh, it's a German company, mm -hmm. the number one in CE. And they made waves a few years ago. There's this kind of getting more crowded IoT cellular space, SIM, eSIM, iSIM, blah, 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 space, MVNOs focused just on IoT. Um, we've had Nick Earl on from SI before. And so there's a lot of players in the space there. And they're all trying to differentiate each other. They're also trying to, how do we make cellular relevant for IoT? Because what we've always talked about for years is the mobile network operators, like all the big operators have kind of, I don't want to say missed the boat. They, they thought, okay, we have saturated the phone market and IoT is going to be our next thing to get more ARPU and more. And remember all these operators, they only think about one thing, SIMS. That's all they care about. They sell in Sims. They dream about Sims at night. And it's like Sim City. And so they <laughs> thought, I, you know, once they'd yeah. saturated the smartphone market, it's like, how do we get more Sims? Oh, IoT is going to save us. There's going to be trillions of IoT devices, and each one's going to have a SIM card. 
where they screwed up is that they tried to charge a iPhone or Android data plan early on to some of these. And mm -hmm. that's that just doesn't work. Yeah. So you've had that's kind of fizzling out, but you've got these MBNOs and other players doing this thing. And so getting that price down, but it still needs to be really cheap because we, we have a lot of friends in the Laura space and LoRaWAN, which is as cheap as it gets, right? And so how does cellular compete with LoRaWAN, right? Price wise, you know, and once kind of shook up the world a few years ago when they said, what is it like 10 bucks yeah. or 10 euros for 10 years? Yeah. You know, you just pay one time and you get all this data, you know, again, it's for lightweight data that you might be using with Laura. You're just sending little tiny bits of data, nothing high volume. So yeah. Blue's wireless comes along. And so while I was still at Ericsson, I remember early on having discussions with Mopin Khan as he was getting Blues going. And, yeah. you know, he was out of AT&T. And, uh, and then all of a sudden you got Ray Ozzy. You got, you got a lot of firepower over there yeah. in, that le in that leadership team. And we got to spend a lot of time with that leadership team. And so what they've done, yeah. they took that kind of same kind of idea for the plan from mm -hmm. once. 10 years, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then they, they went an extra mile and they gave you hardware. Go, go buy this hardware that gets, that's going to get you connected. Um, a lot of people don't realize it costs a lot of money to get a cellular device yeah, certified. Certification, right? People think, don't I just turn it on like Wi-Fi? And it just, it turns <laughs> out there's a lot of hoops to jump through. So they did all that work there. So they're taking out costs anyway. Raspberry Pi hats, Arduino shields, stuff like that. Anyway, we got to spend a lot of time with them. And uh, that's what's their coming out party, actually, with CES this time. Uh, they're booth with packs, and, uh, you know, they're creating a buzz, um, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm sure we're going to talk to them more and more in the future, near future, far future. But I, I agree with you. It, 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 they've... There's a lot in what they're doing that is reflective about uh, of a lot of the things that we've we surfaced at IoT Coffee Talk, which is so it was really cool to talk with with them, right? In yeah, that. for sure. Yeah, yeah. it was so, also nice. It was nice for me to run into Evo Rook over at once. You know, he joined oh, them. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. Great guy. And so I was first connected with him at Ericsson because he was part of our IoT Accelerator family. Uh, was Sprint, you know, and he was building their Curiosity IoT platform at Sprint. Yeah. And so that's where I got to know him. Uh, yeah, great guy. So it was good to yeah. see him. I think he's going to do great, great stuff for once, yeah. for sure. I mean, if you really think about it, at the, at the time, the Curiosity stuff was pretty progressive. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well thought out and well positioned than what the hyperscalers were doing at that time, because this is like three years ago. Right, yeah, and and so yeah, um, yeah. so we'll we'll see what T-Mobile does with uh, the great stuff that Evo uh, built for them. You got to give credit where credit is due, right? So Evo, you you rock, dude. Much love to Evo, and I guess we'll probably we'll probably run into a lot of these friends again in Barcelona soon. Yep. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. And okay. So we we have to talk about metaverse this whole time. All these sessions that you and I have done, we have not gotten to metaverse. And uh, here's the thing. Probably unless you hung out with the folks over at Digital Hollywood, which I think they were doing stuff in um, Aria, you did not hear about metaverse. And at the very beginning of uh, CES, I, I basically say, hey, look, if I hear metaverse, I will and I didn't hear it at all. It was like funny. I don't know whether or not people like watch my stuff and are afraid to mention it to me, right? If, if they like, they'll be, they'll be in a conversation with someone talking about the metaverse. They'll see you walk by and they're like, oh. no, just shut it down. Oh, you know, down. Actually, I thought the the uh, the um if making the i guess you can call it a threat that i i mean it's kind of a stupid threat right 
that I would take a shot of tequila for every single time I heard metaverse would actually draw people to say metaverse all the time. So I get totally I wasted. Would. Well, I yeah, would. I, I know you would, but thank you. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> when when I see when I see you Monday evening in Corn at the Del Coronado, I'm gonna be saying metaverse, metaverse. And hopefully they'll be pouring some Don Julio yeah. 1942. So at least it'll go down a little smoother. Well, but yeah. yeah. Woof. As they say, that offer has expired. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So I did hear Metaverse you at did, CES. But... Yes, because our friend uh Greg Kahn who's oh, yeah. running his digital stuff, right? Oh. And so Greg previously, before oh, COVID, was, was the head of the IoT consortium. And so, in fact, that was one of the last events I went to almost before COVID lockdown was, I think, that December of 2019 in New York City at the at, uh, Times. Uh, the New York Times has an auditorium adjacent to it, and we had a big event there. And so uh, anyway, he's all about the metaverse and Web3 and yeah that's what he wants to talk about and so i, I did go to an exclusive yes greg con metaverse web 3 slash neom autonomous dinner over at tableau at the win and it was just metaverse 24 7. i mean the shots were going oh yeah yeah um Although I am, I have to admit, I'm a bit envious that I, you had a chance to go and I didn't. Uh, I'll admit that, but it was but cool a lot that I did it because I don't think I would have been able to walk out of that <laughs> hospitality <laughs> suite or wherever the hell you guys were. Uh, I'd be, I'd be gone. It would, have, it would have been, it would have been a disaster. The food was great. Yeah. The drinks were great. Okay, the people it. were great. If they were all players. Everybody yeah. there in that room was a player. So here's the thing. Um, so I hung out at the Metaverse section. And, of course, last year, Microsoft, you had, you had Sadia uh, get, get up there and go, we are a Metaverse company, blah, 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 right? Well, it just happens that uh, maybe their, their, their marketing team didn't make the adjustment, but they plopped, I think, their primary presence right in the middle of the, the Metaverse section. And oddly, they featured nothing that had anything to do with Metaverse. Xbox um, <laughs> controllers. Yeah, uh, cloud gaming. That was as yeah. close as they got. Uh, and the rest of the section was like PCs, PCs, you know. Um, they had their Surface stuff, which is pretty cool. I, I like the, uh, uh, that, that, what do you call it? The, the Surface Studio laptop thing is kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's it's, pretty cool. Cool, but it's like one of those things. It's like the duo. It's over engineered, and I don't think it's really going to fly. I mean, there, there's, there's thoughtful innovation, and there's like gimmicky innovation, and that falls on the gimmicky side. But it yeah. is cool. It is it, cool. It's cool. I wouldn't buy it though. Um, but if someone gave it to you as a, a parting gift or swag, you'd take it. Yes, I, I would. Did it. you? Everybody wants to know since you were at unpacked. Did you walk out of there with one of those two hundred megapixel camera phones that they got? <laughs> oh my! You know what? I have a funny feeling you're going to ask that. And I think David, you know, David actually forecasted that <laughs> pretty well. We didn't get anything, and uh, apparently, you know, they they typically. Um, so no, uh, That's a real shame. Uh, we'll see. I, I might, I might get a demo. I'd like to check out the, the fold and, uh, you know, yeah, uh, I did get to I'm hand tell. three and it, it, it's gonna, a great phone. I mean, it's what a great you... phone. It's a great phone. The galaxy S 23 ultra has the 200 megapixel phone. Let me tell our audience why that's cool and important. I know lots of people, Oh, more megapixels better. And there, there was that battle a long time ago, and then they all settled into this 12 megapixel thing for years. And it wasn't, and then Samsung kind of blew out of that uh, with the S20 Ultra device wow. that had a 108 megapixel camera. And I had that device, and that was also, that was also their first 5G device, 5G Ultra, whatever. And that's why I got it, because it was the first device that had 5G, right? 
and um, amazing photos. And now we're at 200 megapixels. Let me tell you why this might be important to you. And you can watch all the videos on YouTube from the whole Unpacked event, and they go into detail how all that works. <clears throat> but if you look at this this picture behind me right here, you know this is the Mesa Arch in Canyonlands next to Moab, Utah. I can only blow that picture up so big and then it will pixelate, right? Because you took it with a digital no, camera. No. I took I took that photo with an iPhone with my no. 12 megapixel camera and I can't make that picture any bigger than that. And that's pretty yeah. big. But what let's say I want to do, because I've been into, I was like in Park City, Utah, you know, ski resort. And I went into, I love going into art stores. I'm a big fan of going in art galleries and then some are about photo art. I saw this photo that somebody had taken and it was just covering the whole wall. It was ginormous. Yeah. Well, the only way you can do that with digital is you've got to have insane number of pixels so that it can blow up that big without pixelating. And then you see it go to hell in a handbasket, right? Yeah. yeah. That is why I would be interested in a camera like a camera phone like that. <laughs> because, well, hey, you and I have talked about this. The yeah. number one driver for purchases of smartphones today is the camera. By far, everybody, it's the camera. It just is. I know we want to think it's because it's 5G or because no, I don't bad. know. They all, they all have email. <laughs> Actually, so I love you. You're bringing that up. That that is what everyone thinks. Um, it's what we talked about earlier. That's more important. If you can't get that right, it doesn't matter how good your phone is. They will go with the, they will go with the 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 uh, company or the brand that can provide seamless. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you know, uh, I mean, there's nothing to stop Apple from coming up with a 20 megapixel or 300, 400 megapixel camera. That's true. You know. Yeah. Right. And that was and that I was the big that. and that's and that was the big news for the 14 Pro. Yeah. Max was it has a it has a 48 megapixel camera and they finally and they supported the raw image format. Yeah. Um and so uh and so a lot of people are like oh yeah I'm going to get the new iPhone because I can bigger pictures higher resolution it looks prettier you know whatever. Um yeah. But you're right. If we were to just look at the device, okay, we assume that people's buying decisions are based on just that singular device and that singular experience I, I would say hands down you're right it, it's the camera but that's not that's not how we live with these that's not how we ad interface with the right. digital part of our life because you, you and i aren't the only ones buying these phones think about all the gen zers and millennials and all they're doing is they're creators and they're making their TikToks and their yeah. youtubes and their <laughs> vlogging all the time and and so and also the important i think this the new galaxy ultra the the selfie camera is also 4k and has a lot of capabilities because all i mean what, right. gosh it's pretty millennials they and you know they they've gone they went pretty nuts with uh you know what they could do with the uh, snapdragon gen 2 i did a bit um because it, it, it's for Galaxy. It's not just Snapdragon Gen 2. But um, yeah. Oh, hey, let's talk about one last thing. So this is the last thing yeah. on my list. Uh, it's yeah. generative AI. We kind of touched on it, but we have to touch on it. Uh, we talked about, it's basically a parlor trick. Bottom line is this. Yes, it can do some cool stuff. Yes, it can occasionally, and this is what gets promoted most, are occasionally come up with something cool. Um, most of the time, if you've actually played with the tools, it comes up with like some useless stuff. And I think before we go overboard, uh, I did this uh, podcast with, uh, it's an X-Curve podcast with Jeffrey Funk. If you don't know who he is, he's basically the Mr. Anti-Hype. Um, really brilliant guy shares uh, um, amazing stuff so you should follow him but one of the things is uh, what we talk about is this is that most people who talk about technology and life cycle don't actually know the technology 
In fact, someone sent me a clip of someone talking about the new generative AI, which is not new, by the way. And he says, I don't know the technology, but let me tell you how this is going to be revolutionary. Right. Well, if you know nothing about the technology, you have no idea if it's going to be revolutionary. And what you end up doing is you learn about the technology as it disappoints your expectations or the expectations that you formulated listening to people who don't know about technology. And so this is the natural law of things, apparently. <laughs> Forget about, you know, what uh, Christian Clayton uh, wrote. That's all theory. Those, the law is that we go through the hump of nonsense. You know, yeah, I know. I, I love th Christian Clayton. That guy would do what he was talking about. Somewhat. He did. Uh, he, I read his book. He's a very well-studied guy, is what I would say. I read um, his book. It was the best I've ever read. My book. Guy is so. Yes, you were there smart. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But what we're talking so about is, you know, like what apparently is a law of uh, human psyche and uh, societal behavior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, Don't worry about that, folks. Leonard just threw. Clayton Christensen <laughs> under the bus. Rest in peace, genius. Yeah, oh well. There you go. Don't worry about it. You better yeah, take another drink, it. dude. You've At obviously all. been you've been At drinking all. longer than I have, obviously. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I actually had to change the the uh, color tone of my little lamp thingy here. Yeah. Make sure you look right. When it, when it was warm, it was making my face look too red. Do we uh, have do we have a, a Twitch channel or do we have are we on TikTok? Do we have a, a oh. TikTok dance that we do? Or no, no, we don't. No, no. we don't have that. Oh, so so hey, I, uh, I, that's I, all we have because we actually have to jump onto the erroneously scheduled podcast and do this all over again. I audience but anyways, thanks for tuning in. Remember to follow Next Curve at www dot next dash curve dot com. Also. Make sure to uh, check out Rob Tiffany. Everyone knows Rob Tiffany, but you have to check out www.digitalinsights.ai. Uh, digital okay. He's still working on it. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to be awesome when it's done. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. spending too much time working on that other semi-stealth thing, the sustainable thing. So, yeah. 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 And okay, really quickly, we have a couple of comments here. So again, thanks for tuning in. Yes, chats to be done. <laughs> I love that. That's chats really cool. To be done. Um, I like that. A LinkedIn user says, hey, dudes, we need to get together in Barcelona. Uh, hey, dude, I have no idea who you are, but feel free to, if you see us, come and say hi. And, Monday night. Uh, yes. Monday night, go to IoT Stars. Yes. And to Ron Ford, we hope. Number one, we apologize. Somehow LinkedIn popped this up and uh, to your annoyance. But hopefully if you did end up watching this, that you didn't think it as, it's as much BS as you thought it would be because we don't peddle in that stuff. We keep it real here with, with a glass of wine. But, hey, you know, we're, we're just trying to have fun. It's the end of the week. Exactly. Out. <laughs>